I just spent an absurd amount of time researching the proper care for our drone batteries. So I have a few simple tips to literally triple the lifespan of our expensive DJI batteries. Now listen, I am not a rocket scientist. I'm not even a dental assistant. But after all the research I just did for this episode, I am the rain man of lithium polymer drone batteries. Everything we covered today applies to all DJI smart batteries in all of these drone models. There's a very important distinction here that needs to be made. There's smart batteries and there's regular batteries. Smart batteries have a sensor in them which can help preserve their longevity and potentially prevent some damage in a few ways, which we'll talk about later. Most DJI batteries are smart batteries, so they have that sensor in them. That's one of the reasons why they're quite expensive. But many of the non-DJI FPV batteries are not smart batteries. They don't have that sensor. So for today's episode, we're only gonna discuss smart batteries from DJI and how we can greatly prolong their lifespan. So let's get started. It's important to note here that all of the data that I got for this episode, I got directly from DJI. So uh, I'm not sharing anything that was like rumors or opinions in chat rooms or Reddit threads. It's all right from the manufacturer. Charge level and temperature are the two most important things to pay attention to for the longevity of your battery, period. It's just like a 426 Hemi sitting in a 71 Cuda. If you neglect just two essential things like changing the oil and the radiator system, it will cut down the lifespan dramatically. If you don't know what a 426 Hemi Cuda is, you need to ask yourself some hard questions about decisions you're making in your life. Now, drone batteries take the majority of their damage at charge levels at the 90 to 100% range and at the lower range of 10% down to zero. Keeping your drone batteries at the middle range near 50% while not in use will greatly extend the battery life. Yeah, leaving them constantly charged at 100% or fully discharged near zero will kill them much quicker. And here's where that sensor and smart functions can help out a bit. DJI's intelligent flight battery system <laughs> ensures that the batteries are charged and discharged efficiently and safely. They can prolong the lifespan a bit and reduce the risk of some damage. But that does not mean that the sensor takes care of everything, not even close. It depends on you and me, the user, to not fully charge or fully discharge a battery and then not use it for a few days or a few weeks. If you do that, you're damaging your battery, period. The smart functions will help minimize some of the damage that you're doing. I hope that's clear. The smart sensor is kind of like a fire sprinkler system in a house. When there's a fire, damage is already being done. The sprinkler system can hopefully minimize some of that fire damage. The house can still burn to the ground even with a proper fire sprinkler system. It's the same with the sensor in the DJI smart batteries. The smart functions can help minimize damage. But if you do a few small things wrong, you're still cutting the lifespan of your expensive batteries by half or more. So just keep your drone batteries at about a 50% charge level when not in use. We cover a lot today, so I created for you this great cheat sheet which outlines all of the important points. We'll go through that later in the episode. Here's something fundamental about lithium polymer batteries that I didn't know. They do not have the memory effect problem like the old nickel batteries had. Back in the 1980s and early 90s, I used to race off-road remote control cars competitively. I had sponsors, I traveled around the country, I had a national ranking for four-wheel drive. Man, what a blast that was. 
The batteries back then did not like partial discharges and then charged back to full. It was called a memory effect problem and it would damage the race batteries. But lithium polymer batteries don't have that issue. They actually like it if you only do a short flight or a partial flight and use like 40% of the power, no problem, you can charge it right back to 100% and you're ready to fly again. Okay, so you're excited. You're going flying tomorrow. You need to charge all your batteries. Do not connect your batteries to the charger and then come back much later in the day or in the next morning to unplug them. The DJI chargers are supposed to stop charging at 100%, but anomalies do happen and there are examples of this damaging the LiPo batteries. For example, if one of the cells in the pack has a much higher voltage than the others, it could overcharge and damage the cell or the whole pack, but more on that voltage difference later. So if you know it roughly takes two hours to fully charge a pack, set a timer on your phone to remind you to go back and unplug it after it's fully charged. So the bottom line they say is don't let the battery sit all day or overnight on charge and rely on the auto shut off function. And for the love of whiskey, do not use a non DJI brand chargers on your DJI batteries. I didn't know just how major that was until I did my research here. The DJI chargers work specifically with the sensors in those DJI smart batteries and it provides damage protection which includes overcharging, undercharging, and thermal regulation. So it's highly encouraged, no off-brand quick chargers, no parallel hub chargers instead of the DJI sequential hub charger. Yeah, keeping these batteries healthy is just like keeping your body healthy. Now, this is important. Here's where many people, including myself, were committing a primordial sin. When a battery is powered off and stored, it'll slowly deplete down to zero eventually, which is typical for LiPo batteries. As a battery sits, getting closer to a 10% charge, then eventually to zero, it's now over discharging, and this really causes instability in the battery's chemistry. It causes electrolyte decomposition, cell damage, swelling can start, cats and dogs start sleeping together, all hell breaks loose. Not very bueno. So to prevent this over discharge damage, just keep them at around a 50% charge when not in use. And for long-term non-use, DJI recommends store it at around 50% charge, then remember to do a full charge and then discharge cycle at least once every three months for long-term non-use storage. Now, if you let a battery sit for a few days at 10% charge or less, you're starting to cause damage. So to help minimize some of that damage from this over discharge state, DJI created a, a smart feature and it's called the hibernation mode. Hibernation mode is DJI's way to protect the very delicate lithium polymer chemistry during that over discharge state. DJI says just keep it on the charger long enough to wake it from this hibernation mode and to make sure you're monitoring it closely during that. Damage is still happening, but the smart functions are working to minimize it. So avoid letting your battery sit for too long with anything less than like a 20% charge. Lithium polymer battery fires are more common than I thought. Now it's less common in the smart LiPo batteries to catch fire because of those safety features. LiPo battery fires produce their own oxygen, so you can't stomp it out, you can't pour water on it. Here's a LiPo battery burning under water. It's producing its own oxygen from the combustion. You need a fire extinguisher designed for chemical fires. I found this small chemical fire extinguisher on Amazon. I ordered mine. I put a link down below if you want to check that out, along with some of the other fire safety products for our hobby. Now, 
We talked about charge level and what to do to avoid causing damage. Temperature is the next big topic to discuss because the chemicals in the LiPo batteries are very sensitive to temperature. A hot drone battery is one of the fastest ways to kill their longevity. The official response from DJI is that drones should not be flown in temperatures below zero and above 40 degrees Celsius. I read a separate report that says for lithium polymer batteries, 60 degrees Celsius is the critical limit where the internal chemistry starts to become unstable and you start causing irreversible damage. So if I'm gonna fly during a really hot or really cold day or night, from now on, I'll go to the fly up and I'll look at the current battery temperature to make sure it's not too extreme. Now, there's been a few occasions over the last two years where the weather was pretty extreme, but I really wanted to get the shot. So I just grabbed my Mini 2 and the original old battery it came with and I was still able to get the shot. That's why it's nice to have a beater drone for kind of risky situations like that. I wouldn't have done that with my newer drone. I actually have an entire episode scripted on the importance and the fun of beater drones. So I'll make that episode one day. So the smart functions in the DJI drone batteries are designed to minimize damage from the extreme temperatures and provide some short circuit protection. The common tip when flying in super cold conditions is to keep all of your batteries close to your skin underneath all of your warm coats. Some guys use those hand warmers, but just be careful you don't get the batteries too hot. So what you can do is put those hand warmers in a really thick sock. That way it'll still radiate heat, but that thick sock will prevent it from getting too hot. And when you do a battery swap in freezing temperatures, Make sure you put the spent battery also close to your skin in an inner pocket to keep it warm. You do not want to take out a just used warm battery and then put it outside somewhere in the freezing cold. LiPo battery chemicals are very sensitive to extreme temperature changes. Now for flying in extremely hot weather, it can be a little bit harder to find cool environments for your drone batteries. Obviously, if you have the air conditioning in your car, then you're all set. But if you're out in the field, so to speak, one option is to bring a small cold pack. You can get the reusable ones now like these and they last all day. I have this one here and it works great. I put a link down below if you wanna check some of those out, but do not leave your drone batteries in your car on a hot day. That'll ruin them really quickly. All right. so. When the battery's in the drone and everything is turned on, the sensor in the battery communicates with the fly app and you'll get warnings for both high and low temperatures. It's somewhat common to get the high temperature warning mid-flight. So here's what's recommended. Probably flying on a very hot day if you get that warning, but there's three things that can actually exacerbate that heat issue. The first thing is hovering. Getting airflow through the drone is the number one priority if you're seeing that maximum temperature warning. So you wanna avoid hovering as much as possible on those super hot days. DJI says the second thing that can add to the heat is aggressive flying. Aggressive flying means lots of fast starts and stops at a high speed because the motors have to compensate for that momentum change. And this drains the battery faster and it builds heat faster. So the opposite of aggressive flying is just a constant medium speed. Now, the third thing that can exacerbate the heat during a flight is flying against a really strong wind because the motors have to work extra hard and this draws power faster, creating more heat. So if you got a heat warning and you're flying against a strong wind, you want to try and land as soon as safely possible and then just go retrieve the aircraft. Yeah, heat's a real killer for these LiPo batteries. Here is the DJI drone battery longevity cheat sheet I created for us. Take a screenshot here if you want to reference it later. Oh, I got so much love for everyone in the community here. Thank you so much for watching my flying filmmaker friends. I'll see you in the next one.